Okay, so next up will be Genesis chapter 14. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Eleazar, Cheder Lomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shanab, king of Adma, and Shemeber, king of Zeboam, and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. All these were joined together in the Vale of Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Chedorlomer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. What's happening is just describing an, an incident that occurs here over a period of some years, right? And so the, the, all these ones that are mentioned are, are like kings of different areas, you know, cities or lands or, you know, this, this small nations, whatever. And that it says at first they were all together, right? And it says in, the, in 13, it says, it, or I'm sorry, verse 3, it says all these were joined together in the Vale of, of Siddim, right? And for 12 years they served uh, the a cheddar there, right? Who, who was one of the uh, one of the ones mentioned in verse one? By the way, he was the king of Elam, so apparently he was the he was the head king, right? So they they were all under him, right? For for twelve years, but then it says in the thirteenth year they rebelled, right? So so after some period of time they decided that they didn't like being you know being in Cheddar's group, right? So they they rebelled, and so that's going to lead to now some uh, some infighting and war and so forth. And in the fourteenth year came Chedorlomer and the kings that were with him and smote the Rephaims in Ashtaroth, Karnaim, and the Zuzims in Ham, and the Emims in Shava, Kiriathame, and the Horites in their Mount Seir unto El Paran, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to Enmishpat, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites, that dwelt in Hazazan Tamar. And there went out the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adma, and the king of Zebulun, and the king of Bela, the same as Zor, and they joined battle with them in the vale of Siddim, with Chedorlomer, the king of Elam, and with Tidal, king of nations, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Eleazar, four kings with five. So in, in the previous verse, it said in, in the 13th year that they had rebelled, okay, against the, the one king there who was the head, the head king. And so now, now in, in verse 5, it says in, in the 14th year, they, they had war, all right? It says they, they had war. So it says that uh, the, the, the kings that were with him, they, they smote the other ones. And again, this is really just background to what's, what's really going to happen that applies to the story. So you know, we're not going to go into a whole lot of detail on this. You know, you don't really need to know who who was with who or you know who 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 smote who or whatever, all right? But just uh, the, the things I would point out is, is like in, in verse eight it says the king of Sodom and the king of, of Gomorrah they, they were on they were on one side and, and now you remember who lived near there, right? That we just read about is Lot and his family, right? Lived near there, so that's that's why it's mentioned is because it. Because otherwise it seemed kind of random that we're you know, just reading about Abram and Lot, and now suddenly we're talking the kings of, of this one and that one are fighting. Right? Well, the Sodom and Gomorrah were, was caught up in this also, and Lot was living right near there. Right? So then, then it finally gets down to, to nine, again, just saying who's, who's with who and who's fighting who. Right? So again, this is all just a, a little intro to what's going to happen involving uh, Lot, who's part of the story that we're going through right now. And the vale of Siddim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, and fell there, and they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their victuals, and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. And as the, the, the battle and, the, and is, you know, is coming towards the, the end here, it says in 10, it says the, the vale of Siddim, which is where most of the fighting scene place, was full of of slime pits, right, mm -hmm. whatever that, that means, right, and uh, it says that the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and, and fell there, it says, and, uh, and, and so that they that remained fled to the mountain, right, so basically they were, they were retreating, so Sodom and Gomorrah uh, had fell in this battle, right, and, and so those who were victorious, it says, took, took all the goods from Sodom and Gomorrah, so they, they cleaned out the towns, and, and, they took, and they took people too, 
And in, in particular, it says they, they took Lot with them and, and, and his goods and departed. So he was taken into captivity. He was captured as part of this, uh, this battle. So now suddenly here's Lot, who was uh, you know, it's Abram's nephew. He, he chose to go live over there, and uh, he got swept up in this, in this battle, which I mean, had nothing to do with him, but he was kidnapped and taken into captivity as, as part of, of, this, uh, of this battle. Right? So that's, again, that's where it affects the, the story that we're going through, because now Abram's going to hear that uh, his, his nephew's been uh, kidnapped and, and see what, what he's going to do about that. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people. Of all people who were captured, it says one escaped, right? One person escaped, right? And uh, so he went and found Abram and told him what was going on. He says, hey, you might not have heard, but your, your nephew's been, been kidnapped. He's been taken into captivity along with other, with other people, right? Because Sodom and Gomorrah fell in this, in this battle, right? So, so Abram is not taking this in down. Right. He says he, he gathered up uh, 318 uh, men, his, his trained servants, and uh, said, go get him. All right, go, you know, we're going to have a, a rescue mission here. And, and so, so sure enough, it's in the 15, he's divided himself against them. He and his servants by night, and uh, by night they went, and, and they, they were successful in the mission, all right? It says they, they got a lot out of there and, and all, all of his stuff, he says, and, and women and other people. Right? So they went in and freed all the captives. So again, they weren't looking to have a, a war, per se. They were just on a rescue mission. And so the rescue mission was successful as they got a lot out of there, as well as the other people and, and a lot of the things that, uh, that had been taken also. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedorlomer and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Sheva, which is the king's dale, and Melk. Chesedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. So, so, so now, uh, so Abram has uh, freed all, all the always people, including his nephew. Uh, they, they've taken back some of the spoils that were taken from, from Sodom and Gomorrah. Right, and now, so now it says the, the, the king of Sodom went out to meet him, right? It says to, whether it's to congratulate him or whatever, to talk to him about what, what has happened. Right? And, and now in, in 18, it introduces a name called uh, uh, Melchizedek. Okay? And uh, it says uh, Melchizedek was the, the king of Salem, right? But this particular man was also known as a, as a priest of the Most High God, right? So he was not only a king, but he was, it says he, he, was, he was a priest, so he was a, a godly man, right? And in fact, notice that in 18, it says he brought forth bread and wine to serve to, to Abraham at this time. See, so many Bible scholars point out that, you know, what do we do now, right? With the, the, from Jesus, we serve bread and wine. So here was a case where Melchizedek, many years before, was serving bread and wine, and he was the, the high priest, right? So you know, almost like, like a foreshadowing of Christ at, at that point, right? Because the, the bread and wine was used later to commemorate the, the crucifixion of Jesus, all right? So Melchizedek is usually looked to as a foreshadow of that because he served bread and wine on this particular occasion, and I mean, maybe others for all we know, right? So that it was really... Not, not necessarily for a meal, but rather that it had some meaning as he was the high priest, right? He served the bread and wine. And, so they, and he blessed him, Abram. He said, blessed be Abram of the most high God, possessor of, of heaven and earth, right? So it, this is, uh, he's giving him a blessing. So says, this is really more than just a little meeting or a meal. This is, you know, had some meaning to it. He's giving a blessing to him. 
right? And, and, and further, and now in, in 20, it says, and, and blessed be the most high God, who, who has delivered the enemies in, into thy hand. And, and now the, the, the last part of 20, right, and actually, you know, because it's just saying he and him and him and he and so forth, it, it's generally uh, interpreted, this is when it says, and he gave him tithes of all, which I guess only makes sense in one direction. It, the, the he here is Abram in the other direction. It says that Abram gave to Melchizedek tithes of, of all that he had taken from the, when he went and rescued the, the people and took a lot of the stuff back. Right now, what does it mean to to give tithes? We use the word tithes today, or sometimes it's referred to as tithing, right? It, it, you know, as a way of like, let's say, if we donate to, to God or to the church, right? It, that's sometimes referred to as, as your tithes. However, the the official definition of it is ten percent, right? So really, it's it's only a tithe if it's ten percent of of whatever you're starting out with, all right? So let's say you know if you're income was uh, $100 a week, and you gave $10 to, a week to God, well then you're tithing, right? Anything else is just donating, right? So a tithe is, is 10%. So, so the fact is that he gave him tithes of all, he just basically means that of all the stuff that he took from the, as he rescued these people, he gave 10% of it to uh, Melchizedek right now as the high priest. So in essence, he was donating it to the, if it was a church or whatever it was, he gave him 10%. Right? So he recognized him as a high priest at this point. So, like I said, I, I, I just mentioned the, the name Melchizedek, right? Because it's this episode is mentioned in other even other parts of the scripture, right? It's mentioned later in the Bible. It's mentioned in the Book of Mormon, right? So the name Melchizedek comes up a couple other times, and it refers right back to right here, right? Where it says he served bread and wine, and Abraham turned around and gave him tithes of all the stuff that he had taken when they rescued the people who had been kidnapped. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou should say, I have made Abram rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre, let them take their portion. The king of Sodom, who's, uh, you know, uh, probably a little more uh, unscrupulous, uh, you know, than the, anybody else in this uh, part, it, it comes to Abram and says, it's here. He says, I'll, I'll make you a deal. All right, you, you, uh, you, you give me the people who you rescued, and then you can keep all, you can keep all the stuff for yourself. All right, so all, all the goods, all the stuff you took, right? So that, that'll be the deal. You give me the people, and you keep the stuff. Now, the, the, the only little thing with this is that in Abram, as the uh, having rescued the people and, and rescued those up, the, the king of Sodom had, had no claim on it, right? So, I mean, it, it, Abram really was the, was the legal owner of all that, having rescued it in this way. So the king is offering something that he already has, right? So he says, you know, I... I've, you, know, you, you, you get to keep what's, what's already yours, and, and then you give me something. You, you give me the people, and you can keep this stuff that, that you've taken, right? So really, it was a lousy, a lousy offer. Right? So, so Abram, as you see, replies, he says, listen. He says, first of all, he says, we're not making any deal. Because if I'm going to be wealthy, it's going to be on my own account. I, I, you know, I, I know you, King of Sodom. You know, you're not a, a nice guy. And, uh, so you're going to go around telling people that, that you gave me all this stuff. And then anybody who sees me is going to say, well, yeah, you're only rich because the king of Sodom gave you all that stuff and to, to buy back the, these people. So he says, we're, not just, we're just not going to make any deal at all. Don't, don't give me anything. And, and uh, so basically, I'm going to keep the stuff anyway, and the people are staying with me, and so there's no, there's no deal here. I, I rescued them, and I want them to be free. I don't want them to be owned by, by anybody. All right? So he says, the, the only thing that will... You know, all right, so you, so you gave my, my people something to eat, so that's the only thing that we're accepting is, is what we've already eaten and, like, not even more food to take. Just, obviously, we've, it's, it's in our stomachs, so we can't give it back. So, we'll, uh, you know, that's, that's the only thing that we're going to say that you gave us is you, you, you fed us today, all right? But other than that, there's, there's no deal. So you, you didn't make me rich, and, uh, and that's it. He says, let's, you know, let's just move on from here. So, so in, uh, 
24, okay, he has to save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of, of men which were, were with me, let them take their portion. That's also just the, the food for the day is all we're going to take. Other than that, we, we can all move on from here. 